there is a lot of overlap in what everybody's doing. Um, and, and some of you are in a different place where you have uh, a little bit more of a head start because you've already started this thing. And, and kind of from what you just talked about, Roland, you are in the process of figuring this out. So uh, I'd be curious to sort of ask uh, each of you a question here um, and, and just kind of get uh, each of your opinions. But what are some of the trends you've seen uh, for all the applicants that have applied? Uh, are there some obvious themes here? Are there some obvious repetition of ideas or or things that they all want to do, but they, they haven't seen anybody else do it? Like, how, what's kind of been uh, an overarching pattern for all the applicants? Yeah, uh, in terms of the Chinese community, the, the, most of the applicants, they are, they are developing some applications that focus on, you know, uh, consumers. Consumers. <clears throat> They uh they can afford the consumers with a very low cost or even free of charge you know storage space on the line, so that that means uh the Chinese consumers or the worldwide consumers they then can they can get free access to those uh, distributed storage space. And uh, you know you know China has a, such a such a large population that we we actually we have uh, more than billion more than billion people here. So uh, even for the for the internet users we have at least half a billion. So it's a very large market. Awesome. Uh, Gabriel, Charlene, and, and Emma, what's kind of been some of the trends that you've noticed? Yeah, um, I think, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> that, that, that's okay, okay. So I'll just add a little bit as we laid out in, in our presentation. Uh, I think, you know, at this stage, most of the developers and applicants we have seen is more focused on uh, infrastructure level. Uh, it's more around uh, middleware services, off-chain uh, services, and also, you know, around the user tools. I think that's, you know, given the stage of, you know, development of the ecosystem, right, it's more around, you know, the basic stuff for now, right? And uh, I think the infrastructure need to be there and before the applications can come in at massive scale. Right? Yeah, I think one of the more exciting things, um, you know, for those that don't know, uh, Tachyon's third cohort was vertically focused. It was a DeFi cohort. One of the really exciting things when people ask me, um, you know, about uh, this program with Filecoin and the, and the protocol labs team, um, you know, one, one of the things that's most exciting for me is I, I feel I have those, the, uh, the tingling feeling, the warm and fuzzies like I had when DeFi was just emerging, where I was like, this is the next thing. It feels like you're looking into the future of Web3, and I can only imagine what this ecosystem is going to look like over the next 12 to 18 months. It's really exciting. The great thing about this, this stack is horizontally, it has so many applications and different ways that, uh, that companies can build on top of it, right? Whether it's dev tooling and software deployment uh, services, um, whether it's more of the middleware. And, and I, I get really excited, obviously, thinking about the bridges between Ethereum and Filecoin when distributed storage and smart contracts and DeFi start interacting and playing together and new business models that can be built on top of that, um, all the way to consumer facing applications. So video storage, tele teleconferencing, kind of building decentralized, you know, video conferencing solutions in emerging marketplaces where lag or latency, et cetera, are, are real issues, especially in this COVID context world that we're living in. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, I, 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 it, it, again, it feels like we're looking into the future of Web3 um, and, you know, we're, we're kind of just at the, the early emerging stages, uh, but I am so excited to see um, what this ecosystem blossoms into over the next 12 to 18 months. Amazing. Yeah, I totally agree. I think uh, I've just kind of shared the major categories of use cases we've seen in the applications, right? But in our view, Falcon is really a critical path for projects to go uh, more web three and more decentralized, right? So it's really uh, projects might pick and choose to say whether they do that now or later, but I feel it's kind of like a passage, right? If you want to have more resilient infrastructure, if you want to stay true to all the properties that web three companies is going to offer, then you kind of have to look into how do you adopt Filecoin into your ecosystem, into your infrastructure. So that, that's why we're so excited, like Gabriel was saying, right? It, it, but it is a multi-year journey. We're right now in a very, very beginning, right? We might just see some of the very natural use cases and but a lot of things are I, I think the native use cases are still many years down the down the line that we can't really think of so we just kind of have to stay open-minded to that no that's a great perspective and uh what can I do there's a handful of questions that came in and uh 
Uh, luckily, I'll apply to all four of you. So I'll just kind of go round robin this again. Um, that's a really good point, Emma. And and maybe the question I want to follow up with here is that, is there, uh, obviously, this is a multi-year uh, and, and a very long sort of process in understanding how things compound and grow. Uh, from kind of what you've seen so far, is there a a, an obvious limiting factor that you notice? Like, is it that people just don't know how Web3 works or people haven't realized how decentralized storage may work and we just don't have enough developers? Or is it is there any specific thing that's missing from your perspective? Or is it just that uh, people are gonna soon realize it, but we don't have like a, a shortage of any specific key element here? I wouldn't say it's something we're lacking because it's always a journey, right? And I think we've done amazing being, you know, we just launched the mainnet and we already have the number, the size of storage that's comparable to other cloud provider. That's like amazing. But right now you have this oversupply of storage, right? So it's just kind of like chicken and egg. You, you got to start from somewhere. So now you have the uh, ample abundance supply of storage there. So I, I guess the next critical step is to get actually useful data, uh, useful use cases to get onto this platform, but to convince them you're really up against of the, you know, billion dollar companies that has been in operation for many years. You, you know, they have the customers mind share. So I think there's a lot of challenge we need to overcome to persuade them, hey, this is cheaper, this is more resilient, but the adoption is going to be a journey. So, so I, I don't think we're lacking that, but we're just kind of at the beginning of that journey. And hopefully with the effort of more builders, more funds, more investors come into this space, we can speed up that journey. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll kind of piggyback there. I think um, not, not necessarily missing, but the uh, while the, the storage market seems to be really getting a lot of momentum and traction, which makes a ton of sense, I'm really excited about seeing the retrieval uh, um, uh, aspect start to blossom a little bit more, right? And really, you know, realizing the vision of a decentralized, uh, you know, CDN uh, on the retrieval side of things. Um, it, these are things uh, we have some companies in our cohort that are uh, working on that, thinking through ways to, like to think about how to bootstrap that ecosystem. Um, but I, I think that that will be really exciting to, to Emma's point, right? Like fully realizing the vision of decentralized, uh, it, you know, a fully decentralized AWS, uh, I think is is really, really cool to think about. I, I just add a little bit, um, uh, agree with uh, Emma's comment. Uh, it's a journey, and uh, I think it's a long journey uh, to Web3 uh, and to, to digital freedom. Uh, and, uh, you know, for anything like this, right, and it takes, you know, long-term vision and long-term commitment, right? And it starts with a group of people with that long-term vision and commitment, right? And that's what we see, you know, in Filecoin, in Protocol X leadership here. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's very clear, right, where we are heading to and you just need to, you know, keep building. Uh, and, you know, the reason we are super, you know, confident and excited about Filecoin, because this actually, you know, is easier to relate to average consumers, right? And, uh, you know, compared to DeFi, I think, you know, the storage and CDN market and, you know, the massive, you know, potential um, applications, you know, kick in over the next, you know, few years, Right, and that's you know I easily go to you know every person's average consumers you know everyday life, uh, so you know we're super confident, we're happy to be part of this, right, and then let's build it together. Absolutely, Rolling yeah, yeah I agree. Me. Maybe uh, I wanted to share some of my views in terms of the web web three. Actually, uh, I think the first of the point is that the people here and now, I mean, I mean today people today they still don't know what web three ecosystem will, 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 will it be. <clears throat> Actually, it's, it's just a, a, a evolutionary process. So we are just a, at a very early <clears throat> stage. And uh, now we know, even for IPFs, there are just a very limited uh, data <clears throat> that are stored in IPFs. Still, uh, most of the people are still using a HTTPS. So I think Web3 uh, will start from here. And uh, it, it needs some, <clears throat> some, uh, a couple of years for people to store enough uh, sufficient data, amount of data in IPFS and uh, that, that there will be a, a you know a separate ecosystem to grow on top of IPFS uh, with all the data stored there. So that, that, that means uh, actually uh, nobody knows how the uh, Web3 uh, Web ecosystem will, will evolve. And uh, also uh, just like DeFi, I think five years ago, uh, nobody knows about DeFi, it's just uh, a 
uh, I think the earliest uh, uh, DeFi project is called Ambitious, uh, which is developed by uh, BM, uh, Dubai master uh, Daniel Larum. So at that time, uh, only a few people they know Bitcoin, but nobody knows about the uh, Bitcoin and how uh, it's a revolutionary vision. <clears throat> so I think uh, it's just uh, in terms of DeFi, uh, I think uh, the distributed storage story is just like uh, the DeFi five years ago. So that that means we still need five years to know what it uh, is going to be. Absolutely. Oh, a, yeah, actually, can I add on one point? Because I think what Roland was talking about DeFi, right? Because I think uh, what we were really hoping for is to see a breed of uh, a type of companies that can only exist on Falcoin, right? And 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 uh, meaning uh, DeFi is only amplified when there's smart contract, right? Code only exists in smart contract and the world, right? It doesn't work in Web3, Web2 world. So I, I, I believe there will be this type of companies, right? That's completely enabled by Falcon ecosystem. And, you know, it just doesn't work in a centralized infrastructure. And that's where the breakout will happen. That's a great point. Um, another kind of question, and this is a bit self-serving, but uh, I'm curious to hear sort of well, what do you think about uh, the role that uh, hackathons or, or summits like these would play in, uh, in sort of getting not only just the Filecoin ecosystem, but just accelerators that are helping the Web3 vision sort of become broader, uh, just uh, making that possible. Like, do you think that's like a, a great thing or what kind of role do you see how you can collaborate with them and, and uh, just make that easy for developers to get in and build companies? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll go here. I, I can think of many of uh, some of our top performing projects that have come out of hackathons. I will shout out the ETH Global team uh, and the, the quality of the hackathons that you guys put on. I mean, uh, you know, we're at our fourth cohort at this point. E even if I didn't look at this cohort and I looked at previous cohorts, you know, Idle Finance, uh, you know, in the DeFi ecosystem, re recently hit 100 million AUM, came out of one of your guys' events. Um, same with PyDAO, same with uh, Transact, I believe, in this cohort, you know, a number of companies that have, uh, you know, really high quality projects that have come out of hackathons. I think the importance of really supporting early entrepreneurs, especially that are building startups in Web3, the importance of, of creating a, an ecosystem for them um, a place for them to hack, a, a place for them to, to, to you know, m meet, uh, you know, some of the, the, the top technologists and thought leaders in, in this space. It's such an early and emerging space. So the, the importance of like nurturing these entrepreneurs and nurturing these companies that are tinkering in just this emerging technology, it's just, it's just so massively important, providing them the capital and network and know-how and assistance and help um you know and and it, it's just this this whole space is just so incredible right like everybody that i meet they are truly missionaries they are not mercenaries they're not here you know um because they think they're going to create a billion dollar company that's going to ipo you know in the next five or six years like they're they're creating something because they think the world actually needs it and they want to see the world be a better place and they believe that web3 is a technology that can enable that and create a more self-sufficient self-sustaining uh you know uh, internet um and and as somebody who came into this ecosystem to wash away my sins because i was you know a growth hacker growth engineer uh, hacking over in web2 I, that, I, that really resonates with me. And I, I think, um, so yeah, it's, it's really important to have these, these nurturing ecosystems uh, for these young budding projects and companies to support them um, and help them along. Yeah, I totally agree. If I can add on to that, I think uh, right now, I think over the last couple of years, right, how do you venture build for Web3 ecosystem? I think there's a couple of kind of essential ecosystem infrastructure that needs to be in place. The first is like Hackathon. Uh, Hackathon is a great place to, for like-minded, you know, um, developers to meet people, um, you know, of the same thinking and to test out their skills. And it's really the playground of these talented people, right? And for us, we make it a habit to just kind of scouring through all the, you know, different type of hackathons around the world. We reach out to them to say, hey, what you're building? We'd love to hear what you, you know, bounce off ideas. So that's for one, that's for early stage, you know, a company 
things, ideas that came out, right? Then once they mature to a certain stage, they would need more capital, more investors, right? Um, a more fully formed team. That's where accelerators come in, you know, can bring in the first VC check and pre- can bring in, uh, give them some more um, go-to-market uh, access, more structured support so that they can go a long way, um, more hopefully independently, right? Not just always getting support from the, from the whole ecosystem. So I think those things kind of address different needs of developers and teams uh, along their journey. And, uh, and, and of course, Idol Finance is a great company because we've recently invested in them as well. Love, Mattel, and what the team is building. So keep it up, Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, kind of one question I want to ask again is just, uh, um, you kind of shared a really interesting perspective on what's happening in Asia and, and in China specifically. Um, I guess we're just curious to understand a bit more about like, what do you think would help build a larger developer community uh, in China? Is it is it just events or is it just more hackathons or more grants? Like what, what uh, matters to the audience there and how do we actually help build that up uh, even more? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we definitely want, would like to see more promotion uh, of PowerPoint. Uh, I think both from the product labs and also from other, you know, ecosystem partners, uh, you know, in Asia market, right? And that's where, you know, like Huobi, uh, Langhash, you know, can all come in to help. Uh, and uh, I think more hackathon is definitely, you know, very important as, you know, Gabriel, you know, pointed out, it's very important for, you know, to nurture, you know, the future creators of Web3, right? That's, you know, a place you, you plant seeds, right, and harvest, right? And, uh, you know, we love to see more of these actually organized, you know, through a different kind of, you know, form, <coughs> right? and, uh, you know, collectively with, you know, product labs, I think that's super important because, you know, the technical advisory role, right? And, uh, you know, I think it's still the most important piece at this stage of the, you know, the ecosystem building. Yeah, yeah. My, my view is that uh, the most important things for uh, for, for IPFs or other <coughs> its ecosystem to grow in China is that uh, Proto Lab should be uh, should have some <coughs> uh, organize some uh, local event in in China in terms of such a hacks or, or something like that or boot camp or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Fi Coin or uh, IPFs has something different from other crypto coins. Uh, they because you know. The distributed storage uh, system is actually welcomed and supported by by the Chinese government. So, yeah, I think that there, there will be no uh, policy or legal risk in terms of uh, such kind of uh, hacks. On. So, I think uh, most of the local governments they they welcome uh, the organizers of a distributed storage system uh, to to be there, whether in terms of uh, a <clears throat> to to uh, have their local incorporation or just organize a temporary event there. So many many Chinese, Chinese developers they, they are also uh, they're committed to do something, to do something uh, to do some contributions to IPFS, and uh, they also they 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 didn't have any any chance to see the the, the official representatives from Proto Labs in, in China. So because, uh, probably because of the pandemic in in the last year, so that, that's that's why they uh they felt uh, certain uh, discouraged. But now I think the pandemic the pandemic will anyway end in. Probably in the next year. So I think that there will be some more official uh, events to be organized by Proto Labs in China. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Um, to kind of just the last question, I'm going to end off on a, on a good note here. So I'm going to put all of you on the spot and uh, I'll kind of ask uh, what advice would you give everybody who's applying to your incubators or accelerators and, and just people who are building in this ecosystem? So I'll just have each of you say something that you want to tell the founders and uh, we can end from uh, from there. I think, you know, anything meaningful to the ecosystem actually starts with a problem, you know, to be solved, right? Just articulate, you know, what the problem you're going to solve. And you know, that's actually, you know, um, take the, the, the most important part of that box checklist. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree with uh, Charlene there. I, I think start with the problem <laughs> and uh, always, uh, you know, that problem might change over time, right? But uh, start with something that people want a solution for. 
Yeah, actually, my top advice uh, to those developers is that uh, they should do something unique and dis distinguishable. So, you know, because we have found uh, so many applications, they, they are just doing the same thing. They, they uh, you know, they try to tap into the consumer market. But, but anyway, I think uh, IPF is, is more, much more than that. So I, I believe that there will be some new ideas, uh, very innovative ideas that, that can deliver something uh, new to me. Oh, sorry, uh, I had to unmute there. Yeah, I uh, I would have two pieces of advice, I guess. One, um, your ability to have, as a founder, uh, your ability to have grit, persistence, resourcefulness, stick to itness, like some of those um, you know more qualitative attributes, I think are extremely important. And then the other day, I saw Sam Altman tweet this, and um, I could never, I can't say it better, so I'm just going to steal from him. The compounding returns of a rapid iteration and learning feedback loop is the closest thing you can get to a guaranteed success. And I think the qualitative and then that statement linked together um, is the killer recipe. Um, I have been a founder. I know how hard that journey is. It is extremely, extremely freaking difficult. And for those who decide to step into the pantheon, um, I love entrepreneurs. I love founders. Uh, and so I think if you can stick to it, uh, you'll succeed. It's, a, it's an amazing last sentence to end on. So um, Charlene, Emma, Gabriel, and Roland, thank you so much uh, for giving us your time and being open to uh, doing this thing in all the different time zones, everybody's in. We really appreciate this and uh, hope you have a great rest of the day.